today, we are powerful. Today, we have the freedom of 15 feet. We have 15 feet of freedom. Check it out. 15 feet of freedom. This right here, this mic, that's way better and costs way more than this mic. We don't even need it. We don't even need it. Because today, we got 15 feet of freedom. I bet you're wondering. Trevin, where the f*** is the mug? That perfect mug you spent 20 minutes telling me about. What the f*** is that? Alright? I bet you're asking that right now. That video? There's a lot of people hanging on that video wondering, Hey, when are we going to get that perfect mug you promised us? I know of one person who's like, hey, I want to see what you come. I want to see what the perfect mug is. Is it actually as good as you claim it to be? Out of the 40 people who watch that video, one of them wants to know. And you know what I say? Not yet. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. You're going to get that perfect mug someday. I'm going to hand you a perfect mug on a tray. I don't know, but you're going to get it. Just that day is not today. Today, we're going to be talking about this sword I made. You can't see it. No, maybe you can see it. You can't see it through my camera, but you might be able to see it through Blender if I use screen capture technology, which I might do. Actually, I'm already technically doing it because I record my audio through screen capture technology, not... My camera, which I now have 15 feet of freedom in. I could go over here now and I could tell you all about my art from over here. That's pretty neat. I could tell you all about my art from down here. That's also super neat. I could come over here. I could tell you all about my art from over here. What do you think about that? So I'm going to talk today about subscribing. All right. Please subscribe to my channel. Let's talk. I want to talk to you about the process of designing this sword. So there, there were a few phases to this. First of all, we decided to go on a Sigma diet. I heard through the internet that alpha it's not good enough it's just not good enough anymore to be an alpha is to be weak so instead i've been told that there's one step above alpha and it's you got to be a sigma now and so i in my pursuit of being a sigma learned that i can't waste my time anymore now, this is very sad because probably one of my favorite pastimes is actually, in fact, wasting as much time as possible per day. So that's a shame. What we did, and I say we because my girlfriend and I are both on this adventure, this journey to become actual Sigmas. And let me explain to you that there's nowhere we're going because to be a Sigma, you have to start as a Sigma. So we're not... We're not going anywhere to do this journey. We're not changing anything. We're just becoming what we already are. And that's what I understand to be true. So the thing is, is I started drawing again. And notoriously, if you, if you know me from my past, I hate drawing. I hate drawing. I went to art school, right? I went to art school. I went to one of the hardest art schools in the country, actually, with a focus in, in video games. And um, I went to that school and I had to draw. And the thing is, I liked drawing at that school. It was all right. Because basically I would draw and then they'd go, nice work. And that felt good to me. But then I got out of that school and I was like, I hate drawing. I don't want to ever draw. I want to do everything in 3D again. The rest of my life, 3D. And every time I'd sit down to do something on my computer, I was like, I could draw. But you know what? I could also play Elden Ring. Elden Ring and the DLC. And then I could replay it on New Game Plus. So I could do anything else. So what we did in our pursuit of becoming Sigma is we banned video games. So video games 
banned. There's mobile games I've been playing for like two years. Those are allowed, but only the dailies. Only the dailies. No faffing around in the video game on my phone outside the dailies. Okay? Doom scrolling. Banned. Get that out of here. Throw Woo! Out of my house, bro. No doom scrolling. No video games. No YouTube watching all day. I can't watch YouTube all day. That's banned too. So during work hours, during the day, when you're working, can't just pull open YouTube and watch YouTube. Banned. Dude, that's hard. Other rule. No phone on the toilet. Phone on the toilet? Also banned. That sucks. And because, because we do this because a lot of times you're having a productive day and all of a sudden you have to pee, which is something you really don't have much control over. Sometimes you just, you got to pee. And so what happens is you go to the bathroom to pee. Actually, peeing is a bad example because for like half of us, there's a good chance we're not sitting on the toilet when we're peeing. So being on your phone while you're peeing is kind of weird. So you go to the bathroom to take a poo and you pull out your phone. And maybe you were being productive you go, before you went to the bathroom. When you sit in the bathroom for 15, 20 minutes, just doing shit on your phone. And the thing is, you get up and oftentimes you'll continue doing what you were doing on your phone when you get off the toilet. This is a problem. Sigmas don't do that. The other thing, every day, taking a walk. Take a walk every morning now. Wake up, 10 minutes after I wake up, I start walking. <sighs> Being a Sigma is tough. It's tough. It's a hard journey, but it's easy for Sigmas. Probably. What does this matter? Why is this important? Why am I telling you? Why am I telling you all of this? I forgot to turn on my light. No, no. This light was looking good. Let me turn it back on. That light was like the whole vibe. With a, oh yeah, there it is, dude. Now we got that Northern Lights background. We go on a walk every day. I've been going on pretty good walks too. And then I get to work. And so there's no YouTube, there's no video games. YouTube is only allowed after 12 a.m. And so I get like an hour of YouTube in because I go to bed kind of late, hour or two of YouTube. In. So this is a little bit of YouTube. So what do you do with the rest of your day? Well, you can work, which is one thing I did. And I was working on this model that we're going to talk about today. And the other thing you could do is... Sorry, I was thirsty. The other thing you could do if you're not going to work is be creative. Okay? This is the rule. Be bored. Find a way to enjoy yourself. Not like that. I see you. Find a way to enjoy yourself creatively. What does that mean? Bring back the old hobbies from before video games were everything. I've been playing a hell of a lot of music, been dabbling on the keys again been been singing some playing some music by myself i go and do that that's fun but you can only do that for so long a day so you're not working you're not singing what else do you do well i stare at the wall for a little bit and that's fine but then eventually you get kind of like burned out on staring at the wall because there's really nothing to do and so i actually will just play around with this wallpaper for at least 25 30 minutes just Switch it around. That's pretty sick too. Okay. The last thing is I started drawing. My girlfriend's a character artist and she does like concept art and character and whatnot. And she, she does, she, she's a, a 2D artist primarily. So she put with like a focus in character. So the deal is she's drawing. And I thought to myself, what if I drew two? I hate drawing. What if I drew two? So I sat down. And I started drawing. Maybe it was desperation. Maybe it was true peak boredom. Maybe it was like turning a switch in my soul, but I have to tell you, I enjoyed it. And I stopped thinking about what I was drawing and what I should draw. And I just started drawing what sounded cool, what seemed fun. And so I started drawing weapons because if you can't collect cool weapons in a video game, you might as well create cool weapons on paper. So I started making weapons and I started doing a couple designs and I thought to myself, we have these weapons and they're basically concept 
They're they're like easy little baby concept art, but they're concept art. And so I decided I wanted to model one of these weapons. Now, what you're seeing here will eventually get textured, but that's not the point of this video. This video is about model. I designed and modeled a beast blade. And this beast blade is, I, I call it, honestly, to me, for some reason, it reminds me of a big cheese knife. Now, it realistically has nothing to do with cheese at all. It doesn't fit the form factor of a cheese knife. It doesn't look like a cheese knife. It probably doesn't have the same like balance or weight as a cheese knife. It's more of like a short sword, like a scimitar, but like not really curved. So it's kind of like hybrid gladius scimitar. It was originally like a katana. But I think to myself, big cheese. This blade would cut big cheese. The only downside of this blade cutting cheese is that it would leave teeth marks in the cheese. If you, if someone were, if you, someone reacquired half of the cheese you were cutting, they would think you just took a bite out of it instead of actually cutting it, which is kind of weird for a cheese knife. But that's okay. So that's what this is. This is the big cheese knife, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. It's got panels. Um, but the important part about this knife, I forgot. The important part is I'm a ZBrush artist. I don't have ZBrush anymore because ZBrush did some things I'm not a huge fan of. I considered after school, I was like, look, I'm going to buy myself ZBrush. ZBrush is, it was like $800 for a perpetual license at the time. And I thought to myself, I'll buy ZBrush. You know, we'll just do it. We'll bite the bullet. I, I don't want to pirate it. I want to own it. We're just going to buy ZBrush. And so I went to buy it and I found out uh, ZBrush was acquired by Maxon or I believe it's Maxon, and they change it to subscription fee, and the subscription's like $300 a year, but here's the deal. I'm already paying out the ass for like Adobe. I don't even use it that much. Honestly, I just use Blender. I use like Photoshop. I use Substance Painter a lot. Like Substance Painter is a big deal. I use DaVinci Resolve for editing. I don't even bother with the rest of Adobe stuff. I didn't want to pay any more subscriptions. I got the Hulu. I got HBO. I didn't want to pay for any of that. So what were my options? Sculpt and Blender? No, couldn't be, dude. I hate sculpting and Blender. It sucks. It was almost as much, it almost sucked as much as drawing. Well, the thing is, this time I said to myself, look, you don't have ZBrush. What are you going to do? You have to do art somehow. You can't just stop doing art because you don't have ZBrush. We got Blender. I already had Blender. Don't forget it. I'm a Blender artist, just not a Blender sculptor. So we had Blender. We already downloaded it a while ago. And I jumped into Blender because it was already open. And I started sculpting. Or no, actually, I didn't. I started modeling. I did a block out. I started modeling this guy. You'll see, I have a whole time lapse. It's probably playing in the background. I'm looking at the model on the screen, but we could stick the time lapse in there. I don't know. So... I started modeling this guy in Blender, and this is, I'm going to give you some insight on my takes between uh, Blender and ZBrush because they're slightly different experiences. Now, I crashed about 30 times in Blender, and I'm using Blender 4.2. I have never crashed that much in ZBrush. I've actually never crashed that much in Blender either. I rarely crash in Blender. This was a first time for me. I think I was struggling with the remesh options and... There are other sculpting tools and I was overloading the software and just causing it to crash constantly, trying to figure out resolution minimums, maxes, you know, what's comfortable for the software. So we crashed a lot. That was a bummer. The brushes and UI took some getting used to. I was, I'm very connected to a lot of the brushes I have in ZBrush. I've used them for a long time and they're just good brushes. And so I was like, well, Blender, what do you have that ZBrush had? Do you have anything close to that? And Blender said, no, but we have other things that are pretty good. So you got the, um, let's go, let's take a peep real quick. The brushes I like. You have the classic clay strips brush. This is good. It's very similar to the clay strips brush and ZBrush. I don't really have much to say about it. It's all right. It's an okay brush. I like it. It's all right. And then you got the draw sharp, which is like the, man, you know the one. If you use ZBrush, you know the one. It's like that one. It's it's all right. It's not as good. The smooth is okay. I don't know. I feel like smooth smooths too much or it doesn't smooth enough. And I can't figure out what the hell is going on with it. But it's all right. So, but then I discovered the scrape brush. Now, the scrape brush 
is pretty fire. This is a good brush because it's kind of like the trim dynamic brush, but not as good. It's, it's better in some ways because it's a little cleaner. It feels more like you're actually using clay. Blender in general, I got to say, actually feels more like real clay than ZBrush does, which is kind of cool. And I like having a true 3D viewport. That's also kind of cool. We were trimming. The problem is it's really hard to get flat surfaces because the smaller you make the trim brush, it flattens out an area it like scrapes or the scrape brush. Sorry. It scrapes out an area. But if the surface is already wobbly, it just kind of continues that unless you make it bigger, in which case it'll flatten it out. But you really can't make a huge brush in really small places, as you can see, like on this hilt. So that was a struggle there. So I tried to flatten brush. Flatten brush is weird in that if I were to take it along this edge, expand the area around it instead of chopping down the area I'm on. And it also doesn't keep the angle of the plane from what I could tell. And it like in ZBrush, if you flatten, it'll keep the angle you started at going if you just drag the mouse. The flatten brush tends to change angles depending on you know what surface it's on. So it continuously changes, which is a little funky. The fill brush actually did a better job than the flatten brush. Then I discovered the clay brush. Holy shit, this brush is so good. This brush is everything I ever wanted from a brush. Dude, if you draw soft, it, it brings down the peaks. If you draw hard, it digs into a model. If you if you draw in a like crevice, it'll like fill it in. Um, it's dude, it just feels like clay. You know, my entire background's in ceramics. So having a brush that actually just behaves like clay. It's pretty cool. I like that brush a lot. So anyway, we, we found the brushes. I found out how to use the options of remeshing. So we have, we got Dynatopo, which is dynamic typology. Um, it constructs the typology as you sculpt, meaning you can sculpt infinitely because if you were to take a worm hook, I'm not going to do it here and just pull out clay, it would keep generating triangles along that the wormy guy and uh because of that you can sculpt indefinitely but it the triangles are kind of messy and the resolution is not great because if you set it too high too high fidelity it starts to lag your software isn't remesh is better remesh you have to know exactly what resolution you're setting the mesh to for some reason my blender starts to crash and lag when i get meshes that are over like 300,000 triangles that's ridiculous. My computer is built. I have a big boy computer with specs in it, big ones. And so the fact that that was happening is BS. Like my machine was completely stalling if I got to like 40 million triangles. And the thing is, I've definitely had that and higher in my software before. I know 40 million sounds insane, but I'm saying like my computer was dead. Like Blender was dead at that. Not just unusable or laggy, like stalled out. Um, when I got to like 10 mil, it was unusable. That's weird. I don't know. It might be something on my PC's end. But anyway, so I kept remesh at a reasonable level, got like 250, 300,000 polys on the meshes. That was fine. The other option, if you're smart, you start off, subdivide your mesh a little bit, and you bring in something called multi-resolution. Multi-resolution allows you to subdivide a mesh forward and backwards. So you can subdivide the mesh a bunch and then you could do detail on the really subdivided mesh and then you could roll it back for performance sake. Now, I it doesn't work if you start with a mesh that has zero subdivisions on it. It gets really laggy if you add a bunch of subdivisions. So I would start with a mesh that had like 10,000 triangles and then I would add the multi-res modifier and I would sculpt on that. Now, the problem is, is you're not adding topology as far as I understand. You're not changing the topology. The topology is not dynamic like the remesh option is because I can just keep hitting remesh and remeshing it every time my topology gets a little rough. So kind of jumping around between those and figuring out what works best depending on the circumstance was part of the challenge of learning to sculpt and blender. But I'm happy with it. And you know what? At the end of it all, I actually really enjoyed sculpting in Blender. I got my hotkeys bound up, so navigating the window was really easy with my Wacom tablet. I got the drawing to feel really good, tuned in the brushes until I enjoyed them enough. To, I didn't even feel like I needed to get other brushes. They just were. It was good. It was good. I'm proud of this, this cheese knife. I think it's a high quality cheese knife. I would cut cheese with this cheese knife. We're going to paint it later. I'm going to paint it next time. But first, maybe you'll get a glimpse of what the perfect mug looks like.
No, you definitely won't. I, uh, it's going to be a minute. But eventually you'll see it. So anyway, that's the process. I, as a coming from ZBrush, am now a proponent of Blender sculpting. I use Blender for literally everything else, including my renders, and it's a wonderful piece of software. So the fact that I can do it all in one place, I used to jump back and forth between ZBrush and Blender or ZBrush and Maya. And this is great because now I can just do everything in one place. It's wonderful. You can do your block outs here. Easy. You get some of the best modeling tools. Your UVing, everything, everything makes sense. The UI is not sorted alphabetically. It's not sorted alphabetically. Okay? Why would you do that? So, there's a lot of boons. There's a lot of boons. There's a lot of boons to using Blender for sculpting. And I'm going to put a big check mark on Blender and say, you should use it. It's free, dude. It's free and you could do everything you can do in ZBrush and Blender. Maybe not everything, but like 80% of it. 90% of it, probably even. You could probably find a workaround and do 100% of it if you really... You could probably do 300% of it! You could probably do 300% of it because you could do way more stuff in Blender than you could do in ZBrush. That's pretty crazy. Use Blender, dude. Don't give, don't give those other guys $400 a year. Probably. I don't know. I might change my mind if I like got sponsored or something. Don't do it. Use Blender. Blender's free, dude. Uh, coming from a professional artist to people who are interested in sculpting and don't know what to do, use Blender. It's worth it. It's fine. Your skills will transfer instantly to ZBrush. doesn't matter. All you got to do is relearn the UI in ZBrush. And the, the, it's sorted alphabetically. But you just, you learn that, and it's the same thing. Fundamentally, it's pretty much the same thing. You can even do your retopology and everything in here. It's easy. It's amazing. So yeah, that's it. I, I mean, I don't really know what else to say. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I hope you enjoy my real lights. I think they're pretty cool. I right. peace out.